going to cover today was managing attendance with blended sections. Um, and that is something that I actually covered very recently in a new YouTube video from DPI, um, but I will go over that live. Um, I'm going to go through accessing student demographics and data. I always found I used to be a charter school um, administrator, and I found that my teachers always would forget that they actually had access to a lot of student data in PowerSchool. Um, and then just kind of using the gradebook as a communication tool. Um, that's another sort of feature that I think is often forgotten about, but it has suddenly become a lot more relevant um, with all of the remote learning that's going on. Um, so my contact info and official title, um, the short of it is anything home base I train on. Um, I just started in February, so been fun um, being able to help teachers all across the state instead of just in my school. Um, so there's sort of two categories of things, or well, really three categories of things that I have to talk about here. Um, so I'll start with sort of the, the term I made up of a blended section. Um, so when it comes to PowerSchool scheduling on the administrative side, it gets very, very complicated very, very quickly. Um, and so with all the different remote learning or the Plan B districts where some kids are here these days and other kids are here another day, and this kid over here might have chosen all virtual every day, so a blended section is one that has all of those different types of students mm -hmm. thrown into one single class section. Um, and that was kind of our advice to PowerSchool data managers um, over this summer was to schedule as normal. Um, mostly because now when the students start coming back to school and we start transitioning back to a more normal learning scenario, they're not going to have to redo their schedules. You're not going to lose your grades. Everything's just going to kind of work and flow in PowerSchool, and you won't have to do double work. But those blended sections do make attendance a little bit more difficult. Um, and then to add to that, we also introduced a new attendance code this year, the 1R present off-site. Um, so, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just said I've been using that a lot. Awesome. Well, and hopefully I'll be able to show you a few strategies today that will make that faster. Yay. <laughs> that was my biggest complaint. Um, 22 times I have to enter that over and over. Absolutely. Yes. And that, that was, was, you know, one of the downsides to the approach that we took was, was it can be a lot of clicks, especially if you don't know some of these tricks. Um, mm -hmm. So we've got kind of three different screen options for entering your attendance, actually. Um, and I'm not sure if you've been exposed to all of them. So the single day screen is just that chair where you click and you put in your attendance for the day and you submit and you're done and that's all it does. And that's my only one I'm familiar with. Perfect. So that one's there, but it's not too great this year with all of these scenarios. So the next one down, the multi-day chart. This one lets you not only edit multiple days on one screen at the same time, but you can also set that one R code in bulk for all of your students at one time um, per day. And then the third one there is the seating chart, and this is helpful. Um, so it, do you have all virtual students, or are you kind of half and half mixed I up? I'm a remote teacher right now. When they go back to school in a couple of weeks, I'll remain remote. Um, because I, I live with, uh, my mom moved in with us and she's high risk, so I'll stay remote for as long as we need a remote teacher. Okay, cool, cool. So you've got it a little easier. You've just got to put in your one R every day, essentially. Um, and I'll be able to show you a way to make that super duper easy on yourself moving yeah. forward. Oh, and it looks like we have April back with us. April, I'm going to unmute you. Are you able to hear me? Hopefully it's working better now. Um, so, April, you have not missed very much. We were just talking about the various different 
screen options you have for entering attendance. Um, here, I'll jump back real fast to our agenda. Um, so we're going to go through managing attendance, um, especially with blended sections where you have maybe cohort A kids and cohort B kids and virtual kids all crammed into the same class. And then we'll look at student demographics and data and using the gradebook as a communication tool. Um, we did end up with another person, so we've got two people along with me in this training. So feel free to stop me at any point. Um, and we will make sure that this is valuable for you. Um, so like I was saying, we've got the three different screen options for data entry. You've got the single day screen, which is probably the screen you're most used to. It's the chair, you click it, you take one day of attendance. The multi-day screen, is going to let you take multiple days worth of attendance on one screen and it's going to let you set the same attendance code for all of your students at one time. Open to school to follow along with this. Oops. Sorry, what was that? Oh, I just said I opened um, PowerSchool attendance so that I could look at what you were talking about and I just clicked on multi-day and I'm like shocked. Yeah, right? Isn't that sweet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then the seating chart view will actually allow you to design your own mm -hmm. custom layout seating chart. You can use that to take your attendance. You can print that for a sub, whatever you might need. Um, and then I wanted to mention the code options just real briefly, um, especially like April. I don't know if you've been a teacher for years, but just to sort of set the stage. So you've got the present on-site code um, new this year, and that's just the blank default code. It used to just be present, now it's present on-site is the default. If they're present off-site, you've got to set a 1R, and then of course you still have your unexcused absence and unexcused tardy 2A and 2L. Um, your school's data manager may allow you to enter other codes. There's a list of, I think it's 13 or 14 state-approved attendance codes. These are the four that teachers are most commonly allowed to use. You might have more, you might have less even. Um, they might not let you mark a tardy. It just kind of depends on your individual school or district and how they've set things up. So without further ado, let's jump into actual power school and look at this. Um, so I've got my North Carolina, my training instance here. I am in as a high school teacher. This would work the same at the elementary or middle levels. Oh, I'm sorry, April, see if you can get your microphone going now. Did you have any questions before we dive into a live demo? Can you hear me now? Yes, now we've got you. Okay. Awesome. Welcome. Thank you. So we've got, of course, the single day screen. That's as it always was, but of course, like, and I'm sorry, is it Janie or Janie or Jeannie or? It's pronounced Janie. Okay. So as Janie was saying, it's a pain to click every single kid with a present off site in here. And there are a few tricks you can do here. You can look out into the future um, at future dates or past dates. Now, I should mention, this is another thing that your data manager may have you locked out of. They may only allow you to edit a certain number of days in the future or in the past. They might not let you edit future or past dates at all, or they might have you completely unrestricted. You can edit any date you want, any time you want. Um, so that's the only sort of note on that date. And you can also show multiple sections on the screen if you have multiple different class sections. So like this teacher has three different sections. So that's gonna show all of his sections on one screen. Um, but you guys probably are both very familiar with that screen. So I'm not gonna to spend too much more time there. Where I do wanna spend time is on the multi-day screen. So that is this next icon, the grid. And you could also get there with these tabs at the top. You can flip between single day and multi-day right there too. Um, same thing. So with the multi-day screen, 
you've got, you'll check, select the attendance code you want to work with at the top. So we're going to do 1R present offsite. You can edit the date range that's shown down here below. You can add more weeks to this or take them away. You can show multiple sections here again, just like on the other screen. So if you're a high school teacher with multiple sections, you can see all your sections at once. That's nice. And now if we know that this class is completely remote, all these kids are going to be remote today, we can go ahead and just click this T at the top, and that's going to put in that one R code oh, wow. for every student nice. for that day. Wow. And we can do that into the future, too, if your data manager allows you to. So I can go ahead and do it for the next couple weeks. Cool. And then submit. Yay. Um, and so I, I will mention the DPI answer is, DPI really doesn't want you to be entering 1Rs after the fact, um, so we'd really prefer you enter them as it happens. But we don't have a problem if you want to enter them into the future. So if your data manager lets you edit 10 days out and you always want to put in 10 days worth of 1Rs at a time, go for it. Wow, that's um, helpful. Very helpful. And the nice yeah. thing is you can still, you know, if you wake up today and you've already put in your 1R, but oh, surprise, Judy here didn't log in for the class and you didn't hear from her all day and she didn't turn in her work. You can still go and mark her absent over top of that and submit. So you'll still kind of have your normal daily single day screen step, but you can have it pre-populated with that 1R. So you pre-populate with the one R, and then if you have somebody who doesn't show up, you just go in and make it an absence, which is much easier than adding yeah. all one R's like 20-something times. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm in love with this now. Um, and I'll show you another thing, too. So let me jump, let me jump back to like last week where we didn't put anything in. So I'll also mention if you know, someone in the office is putting in absences for you, or if you know, I don't know, let's say Brian here is was absent this day, and let's say we're putting this in next week. Brian told us he's on vacation this week, so we know he's going to be absent. He said he's not logging in. So if you put in this absent code before you bulk set your 1R, so if we go back to the multi-day screen, we see we've got that one absent code entered. So if we go and bulk put in the one R on this day, it's going to skip over him. It's going to leave that absence. So when you click this button at the top, it's only going to fill in these boxes if they're blank. If they're not blank, it'll skip over it and leave it alone. And now if you needed to change it, you could, but it's just not going to automatically overwrite that. Okay. So I think that that I think is an important point too, especially if you've got you know a, a great data manager or admin assistant who's putting in absences ahead of time for you. Some schools have that. <laughs> it's not going to overwrite that unless that's truly what you want. Okay. Um, and I'll also mention one other thing you may see in here if you ever see one of these codes that's in parentheses. Um, so it would just be parenthesis one R close parenthesis. That means it was entered by a PowerSchool administrator, and so you're not going to be able to overwrite that absence code. Okay. But other than that, you'll be able to bulk set things, and that, I think, makes this way easier. Oh, that makes it so much easier. Um, and now, do either of you have sort of a mixed-up section where you have some kids coming in some days and other kids all remote and they're all in one class? Um, most of mine are Monday, Tuesday, and then remote Wednesday, and then Tuesday, or sorry, Thursday, Friday are in class and remote. So if that makes sense. Okay. So you, you do kind of have a mix going on. Yeah. So are you, how familiar are you with the seating chart view? I love the seating chart. Okay, cool. Because so we have probably for the whole making sure everybody's where they're at just in case something happens. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, that is a very good point. And it's really good for subs to have too. Yeah. Um, so I won't spend a ton of time here. Um, 
since you've already seen it and since I know Jeannie is all remote at this point, um, but kind of a, an idea that came to us, I forget, some district power school coordinator thought of this and I just thought it was the most clever thing, um, was to create a seating chart layout for your different cohorts. Um, so, you know, if I have cohort A that comes on Monday and Tuesday, then I can just kind of come in here and arrange my kids into the proper spot. So I might put a label down here at the bottom for my remote students, and we can drag the ones that we know are remote down there. Oops. I always do that. Okay. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. And then you can arrange, you know, your classroom up here, the however it is you might want it arranged. Okay. Um, but this way you've got this nice easy spot and you've got your remote kids separated out. So you can put in your one R's for them and then deal with your regular seating chart in class up here at the top. Um, and then you can even, if you wanted to duplicate this layout, you can do that. Um, so when you create a new layout, you'll just start from a pre-existing, mm -hmm. and it's going to ask you which seating chart from which class you want to copy. So we'll copy the cohort A chart we just made. Now we've got our cohort B chart, so, you know, maybe we drag these remote kids back up and we put these other kids back down in the remote area, and now we've got our seating chart for Thursday, Friday, let's say. So I just thought that was kind of a, a clever new use for an old old feature. So are there any other questions from you guys on the sort of attendance management pieces? Um, can you show me how you move multiple people? multiple kids. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Um, so if you hold the shift key while you're in here, you can click and, oh, whoops, it helps if I'm on the seating chart design tab rather than, okay. <laughs> when you're on the right tab, um, when you're selecting students, if you hold shift, you can click on multiple at the same time and it'll select all of them. Um, you can also click and drag and it'll give you this sort of orange selection box. And so you can click and drag on top like that too. And you can even hold shift and then click and drag to get yourself some more. Anything else on the I'm good. attendance pieces? Cool. Sounds um, good. Thank you. So and here, here's the fancy thing we would have done if I had more than two people. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next up is accessing student demographics and data. Um, and like I said, this was something that, you know, I found that my teachers always knew it was there, but they would kind of forget in the heat of the moment when they needed a parent email address and they couldn't find it and or they needed to know how this kid was doing in his other class because they were seeing some things in their class and they just wanted to know if it was a pattern. You actually have access to a lot of information on the students you teach. Um, so sort of the four or five that I really wanted to go through um, was the demographics page. So that's going to be all of the basic parent contact information, address, that kind of thing. The quick look up screen, which is actually the same screen that students and parents see on their end, um, you can see that too. And it's going to give you all of their class grades. You can see all of their assignment grades from any class, any of the teacher comments, that kind of thing. Um, cumulative grade information. So this is where you can quickly get like their GPA or their class rank if you're in a high school. Um, elementary, middle, this great, this screen won't be terribly useful, but high school, I think it would be very useful. 
Um, the meeting attendance screen is pretty handy, especially if um, I know there are some schools out there, especially middle schools, they're taking their remote attendance in homeroom. But then if the kid doesn't show up to their actual classes later, those teachers have to email the homeroom teacher to mark them absent. And you can actually go check their meeting attendance yourself and see if they were marked absent in their other classes. Um, and then finally, I was going to poke into teacher comments. Um, so this is a cool spot. You can go and see any of the teacher comments that were on their report cards during the current year, or I believe you can even go into past years as well. I'm 90% sure. We'll, we'll look in just a second and make sure. But um, And of course, we can jump into any others that, that you guys find interesting um, while we're in there. So again, we'll jump back into Power Teacher. Um, so this time we're going to jump into this backpack with an eye icon. Um, and this is sort of the, the student information interface for teachers. So it's going to give you your students listed over here on the left. You can change your classes down here below them. Um, and by default, you're just going to be dropped onto this sort of instruction page. So the first thing you'll do is you'll want to select a student over here on the left. We'll pick on Jenilyn here. And the first screen it should bring you to is the quick lookup screen. And so this is probably the most popular screen in PowerSchool. You can get to it from the admin interface, from the teacher interface, and from the student and parent interface. Um, and this is going to give you just at a glance all of their term grades for all of the classes they're enrolled in, info on the teachers, the rooms that's in. It'll give you their attendance down here at the bottom if you are a daily attendance school or over here next to the classes if your school takes attendance in every single class. You can also click into these grades to get details. So if we're looking at Jenilyn's quarter one grades and, oh, her computer grade is an F, what is up with that? As her teacher, even though you don't teach that class, you can still click in here and see why her grade is that bad. Well, she got two Fs on projects, so that's probably why. Maybe you've seen the same sort of thing in your class. <laughs> um, so that this can really lead to some conversations, right? Yep. Um, and it's also a handy spot to double check their attendance. So, you know, if the parent is yelling at you that they were marked absent or something, you can go verify and see what's in the system for that. And maybe even correct it with that multi-day attendance screen if your data manager lets you. Um, and I'll point out, it does also give you a GPA on this screen, um, which hopefully is accurate. Hopefully your data manager has that set up correctly. Um, and you can see if they have any dropped classes as well. Um, so if you've got a student that may be newly transferred into your class in the middle of the term, and you want to go see what their grade was in the dropped class, you can view their dropped classes that way as well. Um, and if your school uses standards, you also have the standards grades tab, um, which will show you how they're doing from a standards perspective. It's probably going to take a while to load here, but oh, maybe not. So, and again, this is the same thing parents would see and students would see when they log in. Not sure we actually have any standards in our training instance, but oh, we've got one. <laughs> oh, two. Um, so that's kind of it for the quick lookup screen. Um, oh, and I totally skipped over demographics. So quick lookup, sort of the default. I should mention this is typically going to bring you back to the last screen you viewed. So if I switch over to demographics and pick another kid, it's going to stay on demographics. Um, so and up here at the top right, this drop down is where you'll pick the screens that you or the screen you want to deal with at the moment. So demographics, as I said, is sort of all their most basic information. Um, you'll have their name, an address, a home phone number, an age, their aggregate days of membership. So that is how many days have they been at school this year in membership at your school. Um, you've got their birthday, their ethnicity code, and then some parent information. Um, for both father and then mother will be down here 
Some schools will enter data into this guardianship too. So you might see like mom only or foster parent or something like that. And you even get the homeroom and their locker information here if your data manager puts the locker information into PowerSchool. So I had a question. Yes. Um, so the only people that can modify that is um, data managers, correct? Yeah, typically it would just be the data manager um, or whoever they designate to help them out. Okay. I always gave my admin assistants access too so they could update it real quick without bugging me, but some managers like more control than I did. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that is a great point. If you were to see an error in here somewhere, you would have to get with your data manager to correct that. Well, the issue is, is that um, some of that information is so old and I have updated information. So I would just send it to my data manager. Yeah, yeah. And you know, that is a constant fight that you have when your data manager is like, uh, you can never have information that is completely up to date because as soon as you get it all updated somebody sends something else in right so and i'll mention to typically um most often this is the information that's being exported to school messenger or blackboard or bright error or whatever your school's communication system is most often is looking at this page it's not Always true, but typically true. Mm -hmm. um, so next up, I've got cumulative grade information, and this is a pretty simple screen. Now, your data manager can customize this and add all sorts of additional information to it, but if you just very quickly want to see a student's class rank or their current weighted GPA or simple GPA, you can very quickly see that right here. Um, and these are typically recalculated at the end of a term. Anytime your school is issuing a report card, typically is when this would be calculated. Um, and let's see, next up we've got meeting attendance. So this is probably most useful in a middle or high school where you are taking attendance in every single class. Um, but this is gonna show you for each class the student is enrolled in, what was their meeting attendance and you've got it divided into weeks up here so monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday for that date range and kind of so on across through the entire year um so like we can see the student on monday october 26th is marked tardy in her health class for whatever reason um, so you would, if, you know, say you're a homeroom teacher and your school is taking attendance in every class, but the official attendance is in homeroom, and you want to know if this kid actually went to the other classes, you can come in here and see. If you see it blank like this, or you see a bunch of 1Rs, you know they were there. If you see a 2L or a 2A or a bunch of other random codes, they probably didn't make it. Um, and then the last one I kind of picked out was teacher comments. Um, and this maybe isn't a great example, but this is going to show the comment that is entered for a student's final grade in the reporting term selected up here. Um, so let's flip to, don't know that we have any comments in here on the student. Okay, yeah, I guess we don't. But, and I guess I was wrong, you can't see previous years, but you can at least see, you know, maybe it's report card time, you want to see what other teachers had to say about this kid, you can come in and see what their other teachers commented on the report card. Now, is that just report cards or will that show like their homework that they did? Um, so this screen is only going to show you their final grade comment. But if you wanted to get that more detailed information, you could go to Quick Look Up here and really drill down into their grades and see what's going on. Um, yeah. You know, see what their assignments are and what the flags are. And if there's a comment on it, um, so like this teacher put in this comment for this assignment okay. grade. Um, and this again is the exact same thing that parents can see too.
So and are there any others here that you want to look at? Not really. I don't use all of them. So uh, actually, can we see the SPED? Um, you can, but. I don't think I have that. You don't. Okay. <laughs> um, so this is part of core power school. Um, this training instance is just vanilla plain Jane power school versus your real power school. It's a customized North Carolina version that has all of our special ECAT stuff baked in. Yep. Yep. Um, That's what I want. So. Yeah. This is power school's special education product. Okay. We don't use it, so no worries. We do not. That's that's my only comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> Are all of these things also available in Power uh, Power Teacher Pro? Um, you know, I am not entirely sure. So this is the Power Teacher Portal before you click into Power Teacher Pro. Um, yep. Just for fun, let's flip over into Power Teacher Pro. That's actually my topic usually anyway. Graphics is through Power Teacher Pro. So Power Teacher Pro is the newer spot, and you can go to the Students Charm and the Demographics, and it's going to give you the same exact information over here. Um, and it's even going to give you some additional contact information. So in Power Teacher Pro, it's going to show you their emergency contacts as well, if those have been entered. Um, so that is also a great place to go for that info. The only sort of deal with the, the contacts section versus the basic student information section up here. Um, contacts is a newer PowerSchool feature, and we are still working statewide to get all of the contacts cleaned up. Um, so depending where you are in the state and how far along your data manager and your you know district level PowerSchool coordinator are, you may have awesome, great, helpful data down here in contacts, or you may have very limited data and you're better off on just the student information section or on the demographics page in plain old Power Teacher. It looks like our data is on top of things because I just glanced at some of my kids and it's all, it's all populated. Oh, awesome. Yeah, and I, I think the last survey we did, uh, most of them indicated they were at least partially done so <laughs> ho hopefully you know as more time goes on you'll find that that is good data down in there um, power school is actually working to replace this sort of the module that generates this information is getting replaced with the new contacts module which will be great eventually but for right now depending where you are it's either great or terrible <laughs> Um, oh, and you can get to Quick Lookup from Tower Teacher Pro as well. So this, again, is the same same screen we looked at before, um, and that'll be the student's view, the student's charm. And you've got, looks like you can get to comments, too. I really should have clicked through here more before I finalized my um, presentation there. But same exact information kind of works the same way. Um, you can still click into the grade and kind of get those details. You can even see the assignment details and the assignment descriptions. And if they would put in a grade comment, you could see that. You can even see what standards something is tagged to. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, that's what this kind of crazy graphy rulery button is, um, is the standards. And it'll only show so, up if standards are tagged. Sorry. So if we as a teacher don't put in our standards, that won't be in there, will that? Correct, yeah. So the standards, whenever you're creating an assignment in yep. Power Teacher Pro, um, if you wanted it to calculate standards, you would have to tag the standards at that point. Okay. And I should also mention, for you to tag the standards, your data manager has to have imported the standards. <laughs> Yeah, there's the the way PowerSchool handles standards in the back end is kind of crazy complicated, and there's no way for us at DPI to just push out the standards to you. So all the data managers have to get this file from us and then tweak it and then import it on their own. Okay. So 
again, depending where you are, you might have standards in there or you might not. Um, just kind of depends on your individual school or district. So the, any other sort of student data or demographics things I can cover? We're jumping into sort of a grading Power Teacher Pro section next, so. All right, cool. That's our fancy thing again, but I won't put you guys through that. <laughs> um, so using the gradebook as a communication tool, this is sort of the the first topic I thought of when they asked me to come up with something for NC Bold. Um, so, you know, none of these features are new. And I also want to preface this with this is not a way to just email your parents or email your kids. Power School doesn't do that. Um, but even still, the gradebook really can be a pretty powerful communication tool if your parents are logging in, if your students are logging in, and if you are putting in the information. Um, so sort of the main things, so from the parent and student portal online, just the website, parents and students can, as you probably know, get their class grades, their assignment grades, their attendance, their class information. From the parent mobile app, which some teachers have seen, some haven't, parents can also get instant notifications when you update their kids' grades or when you put in an absence. And they can also see an upcoming assignment calendar. So if they want to know what's going on in your class tomorrow, they can see a calendar that's going to show them all of your assignments that are due tomorrow. Um, and I think some of these, these things get very easily overlooked, but I think with the remote learning and the blended learning, they become a little bit more important. Parents are maybe looking at their PowerSchool app a little more closely with remote learning. So adding some information can really help them as they kind of try to navigate helping their students. Um, so of course there's the class description, sort of an overall class description or maybe a spot where you can tell the parents about yourself or how you want them to contact you, that kind of thing. You've got assignment descriptions and due dates. So you can put the due dates in and have the parents see it on a calendar. And if you put in a good description, the parent's going to be able to know exactly what that is and if they can help their kid with it. Um, grade comments, I think, is another thing that was often overlooked, especially in the past, but now with the remote learning, you've also got remote feedback. So rather than just throwing in a 60 on this assignment that a student didn't do real well on, maybe you also put a comment alongside that assignment grade so that when another teacher goes in or a parent goes in and they see that low grade, they also maybe know why that grade was so low. Um, and then the last one was just class comments, which really is just your report card comments. Um, you know, like I said, none of these things are really new. I think that there are just maybe some new ways to frame their usefulness. Um, so do you guys have kind of any general questions on that before we dive in specifically? I do not, no. Cool. So I'll just jump in real basically. So we are in actual Power Teacher Pro for this section. Um, so I'll start with the class comment. So I'm just going to work with my US history class for now. That'll be fine. And we'll go into settings over on the left and then class descriptions. And so this is where you can sort of set up a nice class description. You can see in our training database, they've used it as sort of a teacher bio section which I think is a, a cool idea. Um, you might also add like, I don't know, maybe you have office hours or something. <coughs> um, and you can even get fancy and do, you know, HTML formatting up here, all this fancy cool stuff. So you might turn this into sort of a robust little intro to your class and yourself and how to get help kind of thing. Um, and parents will be able to see that. And then we'll jump in actually here in just a little bit 
and look at it from the parent perspective too. Um, and I'll also point out you can give it a custom class name here. This is really more for your purposes, but if you have four U.S. history sections and they're all called U.S. history, you might want to give them a more descriptive name. <laughs> and that's kind of a newer thing, um, that custom name. So that's class description. Let's see what else did I have on that slide. Um, so assignment descriptions and due dates, and I'm going to guess you guys are probably pretty familiar with this, um, but I'll jump into an assignment anyway. Um, so, you know, when you're creating an assignment, you've got kind of this little window where you're setting it all up. Why did that not load in my assignment? Oh, that's it's still loading in general. Come on, PowerSchool. Okay, there we go. Hmm. You know, I might have found a bug in our training no. server here. Oh, there it goes. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> so you've got the assignment description, and again, parents can see this. So this, again, might be somewhere where you start building out sort of a more robust description. Maybe you link to the, you know, specific resource that it is. Um, you know, the, this is really a spot you, you can put in more information. So when a parent is clicking through trying to help their kid with remote learning, they have more information and it's all just right there in one spot for them. Um, and then, of course, you've also got the due date here. So since this due date is Wednesday 930, if the parent goes into their calendar view, they're going to know that their kid has Chapter 3 homework due on Wednesday the 30th, so maybe they can help their kid make sure that they are um, getting that done in time. I like to put a very detailed information in there, too, so the parent understands it. Oh, I love that. Thank you. I, I always struggled to, to get teachers to see the value in that. Yep. Well, then it's also in writing. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, they can't say they didn't know because exactly. um, it's all right there. Yep. So I have a question. Absolutely, yes. When you were back on that other screen and you were putting in the description in the lower part of the box, did you say that you could add a link there that would take them to an outside resource for what they can use with that homework? Yes, absolutely. So you've got this rich HTML editing bar here, and this is actually the same bar that's on the class description too, and this little chain link icon will let you put in a link. So you'll put in the text you want it to show, and then you'll paste in your URL. Oh, that's awesome. And you could even make it an email link if you wanted. Um, so you know, everything if you wanted to say, click basic. here to email for help. Yeah. It is nice. Yeah, that's useful. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I mean, what I can picture is like maybe if it's a Canvas assignment, maybe you just copy paste that link there. So if the parent sees it, they're like, oh, okay, I can just click into Canvas through that and get there. And if they have an observer account in Canvas, they should be able to use that link. And ditto for your kids. If your kids are logged into NC Ed Cloud and Canvas and they click that Canvas link from PowerSchool, it should take them right in. So not, probably not the primary way to deliver that, but a good backup method to just get them in there quickly. Um, and I'm going to guess you guys are probably familiar, too, with grade comments. Um, but of course, when you're going through and grading this assignment, um, I know at the charter I worked at, we required teachers to put a comment on a failing grade, especially in like K-5. Um, so that might be a good spot to put in additional information. Um, you know, student good, you know, whatever it may be that you want the parent or the student to see alongside that low score. So it's not just a low score. Maybe it's some sort of comment to help. And in the comments, I usually say, you know, what it was due, if the 
And then, you know, if it was missing and they turned it in, I changed it and then said turned in this date. So if the parent has questions, that's the day they turned it in. Oh, I love that. That is a great idea. Um, and I'll point out these little flags here too. Um, you know, so if it was a lower grade because it was late, maybe yep. you put that late flag on there. Or if it's a zero because they haven't turned it in, maybe you do missing until they turn it in. And I even would have some teachers would use this collected flag to say like, hey, I've got the assignment, but I haven't had time to grade it yet. Leave me alone. I have it. At least the parents know they have it. Um, and then, of course, the final thing I had sort of on my list was the overall grade comment, um, which, again, I'm sure you guys are probably familiar with, but that is if you go into grading and score sheet and click into their final grade is this sort of final overall comment. Those are most often typically printed on school report cards. Um, they may choose not to print them on your report cards, depending on your school, but usually they're included. Um, and again, that's something that students and parents can see on their end as well, and other teachers. Um, so are there any other kind of grade book communication kind of questions that I can cover for you guys before we jump into looking at what the parents and the students see? I'm good. Cool. All right. So just for fun, I did want to show you guys what the parents see on their end. Um, so let me get logged in. And I'm going to show you what parents see online. I'm also going to show you what the parent mobile app looks like, because um, I would find typically my parents would just want the app. They don't care about a website. They don't want a website. They just want an app to pop up and tell them that the kid's doing great or yep. bad or whatever. <laughs> so, and I will mention parents do have to register their account on the website before they can use the app. But if they've got their login, they can just download the app and go. So this is what a parent's portal looks like. Um, and like I mentioned, they've got the same exact quick lookup screen that you had over on the teacher side and also over on the admin side. Um, so they can click into these grades and see the details. If the teacher has entered a description for their class, it would be right up here under section description. If their student had a comment for this final grade, we clicked on the quarter one final grade. So if there was a comment there with that grade, it would be shown there. And then they've got their assignment list. And so just like we saw those flags, excuse me, ugh, flags that we were, we were playing with all show up over here. So the parent knows, you know, hey, this Q2A test has been collected. So I guess they just haven't graded it yet. Um, and if there is a comment, they'll have this little view link here so they can pop it up and see what the comment was. Um, and let me actually, uh, I'll jump into our actual class and show you. Um, I'll also point out here at the top, this parent actually has two students linked to their account. So I'm gonna flip over to Jenna Lynn here. She is the one that's in our US history class. So if we click in, to her US history class grade, you can see that section description, our office hours are included here. So the parent knows if their kid needs help, they can find me Tuesday at three. And I can go in and see all of their little assignment grades and see what the deal is. Parents can also kind of go and see, you know, kind of a cumulative grade view. They can see your teacher comments on a separate screen, just like you can. Um, they also get these nifty little direct links to email the teachers. Um, and of course, they can see attendance history. Um, so this is the same meeting attendance screen that you can see on your end, just for the parent. There's a lot of different things they can see then. 
Absolutely. It's it's actually kind of impressive what all they can get um, if they would just get you it. Can. <laughs> exactly. Um, the My Schedule is pretty cool, too, um, I think, for a student or a parent, um, especially like an EC student. When I showed yes. my EC teachers this, their minds were blown yes. that their kids could just go see a nice color-coded schedule right there. Yep. Um, so that is available for students and parents both all through the website. Um, and there is some other cool stuff. They can set up email notifications if your system admin has set it up. Clearly our training admin has not set that up. Um, so kind of a lot in here, but those are kind of the highlights. Um, in a high school, they could even do class registration and crazy stuff like that. Um, so that's sort of at a glance. Are there any questions on the sort of web version of this before I show you guys the mobile version? I'm good. Cool. All right. So here then will be the mobile version. And hopefully you can see that. So I'm going to open up the PowerSchool Parent app. I've already logged in as this parent. And we'll just we'll refresh this. Um, and up here on the top right is where they'll select their student. So we've got Gentleman selected. And of course, it's the same information, just in a much prettier interface. You've got this sort of quick data up here with the GPA, their fees and their meal balance. I'll mention the meal balance and fees. Most North Carolina schools don't use PowerSchool for that. So you may not actually see that in yours. Um, they certainly can, just most choose not to. So, um, But they've got all their classes listed in these nice little tiles with the grades nice and big. Um, they can come down here. They can even see upcoming assignments. So if we tap on upcoming, the parent's going to see all of the upcoming assignments that their student has coming up soon. So they know today their kid has a test in EnviroScience. Tomorrow they've got an art project due and so on, you know, as far into the future as the teachers have entered it. Um, they can also see the recent assignments. So, you know, everything that was due yesterday or before that. And I'm not sure. So status, this is very cool. This is a newer one. I actually haven't seen this before. Status is going to let them see their students, all of their students missing work oh, or incomplete work or late work. That, God, I wish they had this a year ago. It would have mm -hmm. made my life easier at a school. Um, and they also get their absences down here if you take it in every class. So they know that they got marked absent in English for some reason on Thursday. So maybe they need to have a conversation about that. Yep. Um, and just like in the, the web version, they can tap onto one of these class tiles and sort of drill down into the details. Um, so again, they've got their term selector up here. They see the teacher's name, a little quick tap to email the teacher just right there. Period and room, their grade. It does say in progress um, since we're still in quarter one. It's not a final grade yet. Um, and then same thing. It's going to list all the assignments. They can tap into the assignment and see the description and the grade and the grade comment if there is one. They can also flip over to attendance for just that class and also standards for just that class if the school is using standards grades, which well, it looks like they have a few standards grades in here. So um, the other nice things down here along the bottom, they've got sort of a mobile version on this classes tab at the bottom is this mobile version of the quick lookup screen which again works the same way and you can even tap a grade and get right back to that same screen we were just on. And they can filter this by quarter as well or term, depends what terms your school has set up up here at the top. Or they can see a grid with all of them. Next up down here is calendar and th this is really the, the cool one that I really like. Um, so if the parent wants to see just on a calendar view what's coming up, they can do that right here. They just pick the day. 
and they see everything that is due in the gradebook that day. Nice. Um, so that's pretty handy. Uh, I'll mention the Canvas parent app does this same exact thing, but depending on how you're doing your grading, you might not have everything in Canvas. You might want to use this instead. Kind of depends on your individual school. Um, and then you've also got this nice schedule view, which is very similar to the one on the web version. Um, and you can scroll through to different days. Looks like you can only do a week at a time, but at least it's there. Yep. Um, and then they do have this sort of more information. They can go in and see information about the school. They can go in and check their account. They can add more students to it if they want. Um, they can really do a lot through here. They just, last I checked, they couldn't register their account initially with the app. Although, actually, just for fun, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to log out of this real quick and see if they can register through the app directly now. No, nope, doesn't look like they can. So they do have to register on the website first and then get the app. Um, and that's also where they get this little district code here. They'll need that the first okay. time they log into the app. And so that is kind of the entirety of my prepared content. Um, but we do have about just under 20 minutes left. So if there is anything at all that I can cover for you guys while we are together, I am happy to do that. Um, I want to make sure this is valuable for you. So I don't have anything. I don't have anything either. I think you filled in all the blanks that I um, expected to have filled in when I came. Yes. Oh, awesome. I learned a couple I'm things. Very happy to hear that. <laughs> uh -huh.